Hello Booktube. Today you have the honour of joining me on something I have never done before. Well at least not on this mass scale. I have in the past got rid of books. When books offend my senses, out they go. But I have never gone through my shelves honestly in the past and gone, you know what, I'm never going to read that again. Goodbye. So today I decided that it's about high time I did that because I have got tons of books that I'm never going to read again and they're just taking up valuable precious shelf space for stuff I do want. They're also costing me a lot of time in reorganization because I seem to buy a lot of authors between A and C and that means the rest of the alphabet has to get moved down. So yeah this has taken a lot of courage I have never done this before in the past never there is a, well m many of you who don't read YA are probably not going to be interested in much of this because a lot of these books are YA the reason for this is that I started the library at my last school and I didn't want to go and just get books that I had read as a child and just rely on it because technology has changed, the times have changed, what children are like has changed, um, cultural situations have changed. I mean, think about the effects that 9-11 has had on the world. And um, so I went and I got tons of YA. I bought tons of YA and I would read it so that I could make a good choice for the library. The problem is, is that all the books that I didn't like and that I didn't end up selling from my own stash, I am sitting with. So why keep them? Why keep them? Anyway, so that's just a warning. Some of you might not find this all that interesting because of all the YA that is here. But there are other little finds throughout that maybe will poke your interests. Other than that, for the rest of you remaining for my moral or immoral support, I greatly appreciate it. Let me show you what I am going to be flogging off at Jimmy's Secondhand Bookshop tomorrow. <laughs> if I can fit it in the boot. Anyway, so I'm, the first three books that I'm going to show you are three books that I bought back when I was in high school. I can remember it. It was one of the exclusive books' first sales that they had. But the only book that I loved, that I remember from that, was King Rat by China Mieville. The rest of them I know I read in here, out there, you know, you know the draw, right? So the for first one is Foreign Body by Joyce Holmes. So this one is going bye bye if Jimmy will take it. If not, it's going to Wagtails, the animal welfare shop. Excuse it, I've got a box. In fact, I've got two boxes and they don't fit. The second one is Bird by Jane Adams no memory about what this was about but you know it's been sitting on my shelf for over 25 years there's no reason why I'm going to reread it now then I've got The Desire of the Moth by Margaret Murphy once again these are all crime thrillers though then for those of you who have been following my channel these you will remember my DNFs from this month so we're going to start off with Because It Is My Blood by Gabriel Zevin, which I didn't even get 13 pages into, just not doing that to myself. The Sealed Letter by Emma Donahue. Jimmy can have this one back. Um, this was a historical novel and it seems to be about a divorce. But it really over, I read almost 200 pages and I still didn't get to the divorce. Then... A Spot of Bother by Mark Haddon. As I said, I got this because I loved The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Night by him. It gave me such an interesting insight or perspective into autism. But this one is just not my kind of book. Not interested in family dramas and things like that. If it was just about the lesion on the guy's leg and him concerned that he had cancer, it might have been more interesting. But as this was, not interested in the slightest. And something was wet underneath there. Damn. Okay, and then the last one, which is now currently way two, is the book that actually got me to start my booktube channel. <laughs> DNFing Emma by Alexander McCall Smith. 
I really do enjoy Alec Alexander McCall Smith's books as a whole. Well, general rule. Um, I really enjoy his number one ladies detective agency. It's a wonderful view of the simple life in Botswana, Ubuntu, things like that. This book failed as a retelling of Emma. And I felt, that, well, Jane Austen's Emma, just in case you're wondering which Emma. I mean, it's not like you guys read or anything. But, um, so, I didn't want this to damage Jane Austen's Emma in my head, so I just stopped. It's a pretty book, though. All the nice shiny bits. But anyway, off to somebody else. Then, books that you've also seen recently, Self-Defense by Jonathan Kellerman. I'm never going to reread it. Why keep it taking up shelf space? Whiskey Tango Foxtrot by, who were you? David Sheffer. So, this book kept me interested, but it really peed me off, because when it got exciting, the book stopped. I don't quite get the point of that. I'm never going to reread it with that idea in my mind. Need I mention Saving Sophie again by Sam Carrington, the book that drove me nuts this last week? Yeah, not keeping it, not having it take up shelf space, it was kind of a waste of trees. Okay, so those are those that you have seen recently. Then, this one is Karen Rose, Closer Than You Think. This was a crime novel, um, kind of like a, what do they call it, noir it's a chick lit crime novel anyway. But look, it, it, it was an interesting plot, etc., etc. I'm glad that I wasn't the person missing in this because all the sexual tension between the female and the cop, um, yeah, if, if they kind of just shagged and got it over and done with, they probably would have found the girl long before she was that traumatized. But anyway. So, but this wasn't a bad series. It's quite popular and I can see why. It's got a plot that moves, the pacing's good. But there's no point in keeping it. I, I know what happens. And although in 30 years I'm probably not going to remember, it's not good enough to keep for a reread in 30 years of time. Um, this is the first, well, the only book, no, not the only book, but the one book that I'm getting rid of that I haven't read. So this is The Cider House Rules by John Irving. I had been on a hunt for um, A Prayer for Owen Meany and The World According to Garp, and I was having no luck finding them. But I did keep stumbling upon this one, and I thought, well, it's the same author. Let me give him a try. But, you know, I've even had the movie pass through my hands, and I haven't feel inclined to watch it. And I am just not interested. I've read A Prayer for Own Meanie now. I've read The World According to God. They're still on my shelves. I'm not going to say that they were the best books that I've ever read. But I've done the time that I've wanted to do with John Irving. And although I can't fault him really, I find him very long-winded. So I'm just going to spare myself the headache of reading this one. Now we get to some incomplete series. Now, a lot of this was bought because of YouTube back a couple of years ago. Um, I used to follow a lot of the young YA YouTubers because, as I said, I was looking for books for the school library. And I wanted books specifically that would try and encourage the kids to read. I didn't want to murder them with classics because, you know, just because I like it doesn't mean that they are going to. And um, so, a lot of these books I got because of that and some of them weren't bad I mean like this one The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon you know it wasn't dreadful but I'm never going to continue the series so why keep the first book it, it was okay I mean there's going to be a whole lot of young kids that are going off to Jimmy's to go and get books and I mean you can see I read my books the spines on cracked it looks like it was bought brand new from a shop so let some kid read it. Maybe they'll want to get the rest of the series. The next one is also an incomplete series. Um, this is Lee Bardugo's Shadow and Bone and Siege and Storm. This is where I started to question YouTube um, or Booktube, particularly with the YA um, Booktubers, because they raved about this series so much. 
and I just can't see it. I don't know if I'm too old for it. I mean, let's be honest, I'm old enough to have a child that's reading YA. Um, just in case you're thinking that's a lie, I'm 40. Well, we'll be in four months. So, less than actually. So, um, there, there's just... I'm not interested. The, the whole idea of the love triangle and the good guy and then the dangerous guy, it's just, you know, shoot me first. It, it would be less painful. So, bye-bye. Whoever decides they're going to pick this up, maybe they will also be rooting for that, you know, bad boy. Because, you know, that's the kind of guy we should really be encouraging our girls to date. And, um, you know, they can go and find Ruin and Rising all on their one see. The next series, also incomplete. Dorothy Must Die and the Wicked All Rise. So this peed me off to no extent. Because if you read the back, it tells you what's going to happen in the second last chapter. So this entire book is not a surprise. So then I thought, well, okay, you know, I loved Wicked, have a grudge against Dorothy. I'll try the next chapter, I'll try the next installment. And you know what? Nothing happened. It was a walk. And I'm really getting tired of series that are dragged out for the sake of money. You know, if you can write it in two books, write the bloody thing in two books, you don't have to drag it out for seven. So, not going further in that one. Matter of principle. This one's a complete series. I've read all three. Um, once again, this was another one that was so hyped on YouTube, or BookTube, and I can't see it, man. I just can't. The first book was interesting. So we've got Under the Never Sky. This is by Veronica Rossi, not to be confused by Veronica Roth. Um, it's a dystopian age love story again. But anyway, you know, anybody swear that if you can't find a boyfriend by the time you're 17, you're going to be an old maid for the rest of your life. But anyway, so yeah, this one was okay. The only thing is I really like the covers. Well, I like that one. I, I, I love this movie color in the blue. But, yeah, they can go to somebody who loves them. And the bonus is they get all three. Well, if Jimmy flogs them that way, they can get all three. Another trilogy I've read, didn't enjoy, it's going. So, we've got The Queen of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. So, the first book actually wasn't bad. I, I quite enjoyed this one. I, I got quite into it. The second book, I gave the benefit of the doubt for second book syndrome, a bit of a slumpy read. So I got the third one, which kind of was even worse than the slumpy book two. But they're pretty. I'm sure he won't have any hard time trying to sell them. And if it makes some kid decide to read them, because by the looks of it, YA readers like the series. I am too skeptical for it. Ugh. So much for putting it in the boxes. The next trilogy, well, actually, this I think is five books if memory serves me right but the first three read is a complete series um more complete story you don't need to read beyond and this is by C cinder williams chimer and I, I prefer her demon king series which i am keeping i've got that one but these were okay it was set actually for a younger audience and you know so i've got the warrior air the Wizard Air and the Dragon Air. This is a fantasy novel set kind of with the whole War of the Roses, the White and the Red Roses. And um, it's, they're not bad. She doesn't write a bad story. It's just, I'm too old for them and I'm never going to reread them. And the chances of me actually birthing a child so that, you know, in 16 years they can read them is very small. So why keep them? And my nephew, who is 12 weeks today, is a boy. So he's still probably not... Well, actually, he could read that one. That wouldn't be it. But you know what? That's going to be 16 years from now. So by then, they'll be all fish moth eaten and rubbishy. Then I'm going to have a few standalones. John Green, Paper Towns. This is probably the worst John Green book I've read. You know when you've got a character that you really want to clap? Anyway, oh, that's South African for John Green's The Fault in Our Stars. Now, this one isn't bad. Um, 
I've got a lot of kids who've read this book and absolutely loved it, but I'm never going to read it um, again. And you know, give it to Jimmy, let him sell it to somebody who's going to love it and maybe start reading. Then we have Me, Earl and the Dying Girl by Jesse Andrews. So Jesse Andrews, well this book is kind of like the non-Anne of Green Gables approach to child cancer. In other words, it's not romanticized. There is no romance in this. In fact, this is quite a harsh, cold book. Um, probably a little bit more up my aisle than the other one, but um, it didn't really do anything for me. So, bye. Then, can you see why this was a traumatic experience? Education Espionage by Gail Carriger. The Maze Runner by James Dashner. What did they see in this? Night School, Night School by C.J. Um, Doherty. This one was also a supernatural urban fantasy kind of a book where she's at boarding school and all this stuff's happening. But besides the fact that this is the first book in a series and I've never seen the rest of them, Then, Divergent, I don't have Insurgent or Allegiant, won't get them, I thought they were rubbish in comparison, not that this was fantastic, but it's got a nice colour, um, but, boy, then, to complete the YA lot, Pitticus Law, I am number four, The Rise of Nine, which is the third book, and The Power of Six, which is the second book. This one's a nice, magnetically shiny cover. But, yeah. I've never had the urge to read further. And then, my last lot is Stephen King. Um, to be precise, it is the Dark Tower series. And yeah, Stephen King and I are going to be breaking up after The Shining, which I'm supposed to be doing as a buddy read sometime this year, which means my friend really has to hurry up and get that damn book because this year is running out. But anyway, so I've got The Shining left. After that, I don't actually intend to read any more Stephen King. And it's taken me a while to actually figure out why. But I think I finally put my finger on it. Every character, well, every time I've read a Stephen King book, with the exception of Mr. Mercedes, oddly enough, oh, and 112263, that one was pretty good. Um, yeah, but with the exception of those, really, uh, I have found that his character, they always have the same voice. They're always crude. It's F this, F that, the, the sexual innuendos, etc., etc. And, you know, I've sat and I've read it, read each book individually and I've gone, would a woman really speak like that? You know, would this guy, oh, I don't know how people in Maine talk. So, you know, may, maybe he's just capturing reality. But then it took me a, a big stunt doing Christmas dishes. I was giving it some thought at that point. And I actually realized that the problem is that every single book has the same character. So, why bother? But anyway, so I got The Gunslinger, um, well, the first three, well, not the first three, one, two, and four. And I really wanted the series because, as you can see, it actually spells out The Dark Tower, if I've got it in the right order, which I don't. Hold that thought. Is that any better? Uh, I'm reading backwards now. Anyway, one way or another, you get the idea. And it looks nice, right? So I wanted to get these. Um, I had got book one and two, and then they I got to a closing down sale at a shop where books were 50% off. And I found book four, they didn't have book three, so I thought, oh, well, I'll take the gamble and I'll try it. No, I read book one, I was kind of underwhelmed. And then I read book two, and I encountered that same character again, the crudity, the crass. 
and it's I don't see why I need to do this to myself the only thing I'm sorry about besides the fact that the spines I mean just look how pretty that is I love the color and I love covers like this where they're kind of ambiguous you're not too sure what they're about but I really like that cover but anyway so that's book one two and four of um, the dark tower and then this one which is a supporting novel because you know seven books are not enough to say what you need to say um, which is going to go as well I, I don't know much about this one I haven't read it but I don't want to do it to myself but it's got pictures and things like that in it so yeah I've had mixed feelings I don't like buying books that I don't end up reading but the first two I mean to carry on is going to cost so much more than to just give up now and there's so many other books that I really want to read and Stephen King's just not really doing it for me so I said I'm curious to read The Shining and then after that he and I are breaking up I'm using him for one more date how, just, how dirty but anyway so that is my DNF no not my DNF my unhaul I'm going to be boxing all of that again and sending it off to Jimmy and with luck I will be coming home with other books because that's the way it works around here you don't get cash you get credit so I might as well go spend it if he's got anything good yeah like I need more books but anyway I um, hope you all are having a great reading time I hope to put up a video before the end of the year talking about my favorite books of 2017 although by the sounds of it I haven't been having much luck of late but yeah I will see you around thank you so much for supporting me during this rather emotional experience of tossing books but as you can see it's not as I'm really connected to them it's just you know it was nice having a whole lot of full shelves but it's going to be nice to have shelves that I can now fit books on as well so and to be totally honest they don't really look that empty in the new year I'm going to put together a quick bookshelf tour so that you can see what I've got you're going to think I'm a bit crazy when you get to that side of the world but we make do with the space that we've got right okay that's me for now